And he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Revelation 16, 16. Over 2,000 years ago, the Apostle John looked up and he saw a doorway open in heaven. Jesus looked down at him and said, Come up hither, and I'll show you what must be hereafter. John was lifted up in spirit form, and God revealed to him the future. John then wrote about the future in the book of Revelation. I am now zooming in to Israel. As you can see, there's Israel right here. Jordan is here, and here is the Sinai. God revealed to John the Battle of Armageddon. In this video, I will show you the Battle of Armageddon. It is the Scripture of Truth from Daniel 10, 21. It is God's opened little book of Revelations chapter 10. I'm now turning off the, the markers. Over here in Jordan, we have Jesus on his white horse and armies of heaven. Here we have the beast and the kings of the earth. They are the participants in the final battle, the battle of Armageddon. A reading from Revelation 19, 11 through 21. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which are in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of burning fire with brimstone. And the remnant was slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. I will now show you the divinely illustrated word of God. Through the power of the Holy Spirit that lives within me, I am able to see and read God's once hidden book. The scripture tells us that John saw someone sitting on a white horse. He saw Jesus sitting on his white horse. These are the exact same images that God revealed to his apostle over 2,000 years ago. This area here represents the white horse. You can see the horse's body and the horse's legs. And sitting upon the horse, you can see a body. Here's the body, a head, and many crowns. It represents Jesus riding his white horse into battle. The scripture says that the one sitting on the horse had many crowns. Well, here's the body, here's the head, and there are the many crowns. One might say they look like branches. Well, they represent branches. They represent the good branches. 
In John 15, Jesus said, I am the true vine, and you are my branches. God's crown are his good branches, those who love him, those who do as he says, those who love their fellow men, and those who follow him and no others. On his head, his forehead, is written a name that nobody knows but he himself. This image here represents the name that only God knows himself. The scripture tells us that he has a sharp sword. The Bible tells us that the word of God, Jesus is the word of God, and the word of God is a sharp two-edged sword. And here you can see the two-edged sword. The scripture tells us that on his thigh is written a name, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is spelled Jesus. J-E-S-U-S. -S. Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is the true vine. The scripture also tells us that his army is riding white horses. Here is the head of a white horse. And John also saw a mighty angel standing in the sun. This represents the angel. There's his face, his strong shoulders, his arm is cocked, his fist is doubled up, and he's ready to kick some serious butt. Moving across the valley to the enemy of God. Satan is the enemy of God. Allah is the enemy of God. Lucifer is the enemy of the true, one, most high God. This image represents the beast and the kings of the earth. Here we can see his army. I see a skull there. Here is a large demonic person. It looks like Frankenstein. This image here is rather interesting. Here's another demon walking the face of the earth. And for years they've been talking about him. He looks like Bigfoot. Bigfoot walks the face of the earth. Demons walk the face of the earth. Here is the beast and the king of the earth. Rotate it here just a little bit for you if I can. Whoops, too much. Satan's eye. His other eye. His horn. His left hand is draped over the shoulder of the king of the earth. You can see his skull. His face is a skull. God has dressed him in a black pinstripe business suit, and he has even given him a tie. While his hand is draped over the left shoulder of the king of the earth, Satan is whispering into his right ear the same thing he whispered to Eve. Ye shall not surely die. It was a lie then. It's a lie now. All who follow the beast all who follow Satan, all who follow Lucifer, all who follow Allah will die the second death. Coming back out here. One might ask, who are the players in this final battle? Who are the players in the Battle of Armageddon? We can find that answer in Galatians 4, Scriptures 21 through 31. The Apostle Paul told us that Hagar is Mount Sinai. Well, I've already shown you that here is Jordan, and here's the Sinai, Mount Sinai. Hagar is Mount Sinai. 
Paul told us that in Galatians 4. So rotating the earth, remember this is a divinely illustrated Bible. It's God's holy Bible. It's the one that Jesus taught from. Here we can see a face. It's a woman's face. It's the face of Hagar. She is dressed in her black abaya, their garment, their cloak that they wear, and she's looking at the beast and the kings of the earth. Turn it around here a little bit. A reading from Galatians 4, 21 through 31. Listen to me, you friends, who think you have to obey the Jewish laws to be saved. Why don't you find out what those laws really mean? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one from his slave wife and one from his freeborn wife. There was nothing unusual about the birth of the slave wife's baby, but the baby of the freeborn wife was born only after God had especially promised he would come. Now this true story is an illustration of God's two ways of helping people. One way was by giving them his laws to obey. He did this on Mount Sinai when he gave the Ten Commandments to Moses. Mount Sinai, by the way, is called Mount Hagar by the Arabs. And in my illustration, Abraham's slave wife's Hagar represents Jerusalem, the mother city of the Jews, the center of that system of trying to please God by trying to obey the commandments. And the Jews who try to follow that system are her slave children. But our mother city is the heavenly Jerusalem, and she is not a slave to Jewish laws. That is what Isaiah meant when he prophesied. Now you can rejoice, O childless woman. You can shout with joy, though you never before had a child. For I'm going to give you many children, more children than the slave wife has. You and I, dear brothers, are the children that God promised, just as Isaac was. And so we who are born of the Holy Spirit are persecuted now by those who want to keep the Jewish laws, just as Isaac, the child of promise, was persecuted by Ishmael, the slave wife's son. But the scriptures say that God told Abraham to send away the slave wife and her son. For the slave wife's son could not inherit Abraham's home and lands along with the free woman's son. Dear brothers, we are not slave children obligated to the Jewish laws, but children of the free woman, acceptable to God because of our faith, our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, on his white horse and armies of heaven, are the seed of Isaac. The army of the beast and the kings of the earth are the seed of Ishmael. Isaac wins. Ishmael loses. I will now show you a transition point from Revelation 19 to Revelation 20. Remember, this is a holy Bible. Here we have Jesus on his white horse and armies of heaven from Revelation 19, 11 through 21. And here is a transition to chapter 20. Then I saw an angel come down from heaven with the key to the bottomless pit and a heavy chain in his hand. He seized the dragon, that old serpent, the devil, Satan, and bound him in chains for a thousand years and threw him into the bottomless pit, which he then shut and locked so that he could not fool the nations any more until the thousand years were finished. Afterwards, he would be released again for a little while. Revelation 20, 1 through 3. Here we have the angel with the key to the abyss reaching out with his heavy chain and seizing the dragon. You can see the dragon's outline here. It's a dragon. This is the Battle of Armageddon. Now, the scripture says that he saw 
an angel. Well, we know that there's a battle. There are many angels involved. And here we see a forceps type device. This is another angel who has the forceps. He has the dragon, dragging him down to the pit. Satan was a formidable foe. And he is now forevermore locked up until God releases him at the end of the thousand years. Again, chapter 20, 1 through 3, Revelation. The dragon. You can see him. Everything that happened in the Holy Bible did. And everything that is to come will. And only Jesus can save you. I will now go to the bottomless pit. The earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. As you can see, there's many pictures here. You can see the wolf here. See the wolf? He's got his tongue out. He's licking the sheep. Australia represents the gathered nations of Matthew 25, 31 through 46, the parable of the sheep and the goats. Lucifer is out to destroy all who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. The bottomless pit. Hillegum Hole represents the bottomless pit. This image here represents the judgment of the dead from Revelations 20, 11 through 15. The gathered nations, the sheep and the goats are the defendants. Antarctica represents Jesus. This side represents the Lion of Judah, who is the judge and jury. You can see God sitting on his throne, the great white throne. The open books are before him. This is the book of life, the book of life. And the word pray, pray, pray that your name is found in the Lamb's book of life. I was going to show you the bottomless pit. Helicum Hole represents the bottomless pit. You can see the old fashioned key. It's a key ready to be inserted into the hole. There's the hole, the key slot. Helicum Hole. Here is Satan. It represents Satan. It's Baphomet, the goat beast. See the goat horns? He's incarcerated, locked up. Locked up until the restrainer is removed. What is the restrainer? This is the restrainer. See his arms out? He's holding him in. He can't leave until, until the restrainer is removed. The restrainer is the Word of God. I see a man's face, and he's wearing a white Elizabethan collar. Let me zoom in here. A man's face, the collar. He has a crown. It's a king. I see a name, James. King James. King James Bible. The King James Bible is the Word of God. Everything that I show you fits perfectly to the King James Bible. The surface of the earth is a divinely illustrated King James Bible. Many things here, but I'm now going to the North Pacific. The Hawaiian Islands represents the open scroll from Revelation 5. And we know that only the Lion of Judah can open the scroll. You can see the lion's profile. The lion is roaring from Amos 3. The lion is treading and stepping upon the dragon from Psalms 91.13. But worthy is the slain Lamb of God. Worthy is Jesus the perfect Lamb of God. This image represents Jesus on the cross, the crucifixion of Jesus. It represents the scripture, John 19.30, when Jesus said, It is finished. 
he bowed his head and released his ghost. The scratch marks in the, in the ground represent the glorification of, of God's Son. This is the most significant moment in the history of all of creation. When Jesus, God's only begotten Son, who came to us as God incarnate, God in the flesh, to teach us how to end our separation with God the Father. And then he willingly gave himself up for us as God's sin offering, the perfect Lamb of God. We can only be saved by the blood of the Lamb. Then again on the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. Jesus is alive and well. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. And through him, everyone who believes in him, who believes that he came to us as God in the flesh, that he died on the cross as God's sin offering, that we are cleansed by the blood of the Lamb, and that he rose again on the third day, will have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And God's only begotten Son is named Jesus, only can you be saved by the name of Jesus? Only Jesus can save you. Repent of your sins and live.